The world is a better place because you are here to join us. My name is Matt Brown, and I am the host of the Productive Conversations podcast. It's great to see each and every single one of you after a light week last week. And we had to maneuver so many things because I don't know if you're aware there was a literal explosion in the city of Norwalk where a lot of work schedules had to be moved around. But as of this moment, and shouts to the government of Connecticut for actually getting it cleaned up. And it shows if people really want to get something changed without (laughs) any political pressure, they will do it. Just keep that in mind. But back to normal. Um, First tweet cap in a couple of weeks. Um, Special Tuesday edition. We'll be back to Fridays next week as well. And we have some very big stories to cover. And don't forget to check us out tomorrow for NFL. And then what's taking place for the tweet cap will be Friday show will be NBA playoffs and then we'll be back to normal switcheroo next week. But regardless, big tweet cap. Glad to see everybody's back. And we have the great Ryan Page and Dolo Ren here with us. Dolo Ren who produced this for this show. Great to see him back on camera. Ryan, our other right hand person here as well <laughs> as per usual. Great to see you as well, Ryan and Dolo. Nice to see you both. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's good seeing you guys. It's good seeing you guys. Back yes. in effect. Back in effect. So a special team as always here. So let's get into what's trending in our world. Usually we at the end of the week. Let's start what's trending at the beginning of this week. Second show in May. Let's do it once and for all. Let us talk about the biggest thing happening on the Internet right now. And I can truly say of all generations and all type of people have at least heard about what we're about to discuss, and I'm sure you know exactly what we're going to get into. But hip-hop has become very, very intense over the past couple of weeks. We started the story now about a month ago mm-hmm. when we had Kendrick and J. Cole, sorry, when we had Drake and J. Cole uh, call out Kendrick Lamar and like that, Kendrick responds back, and over the and ultimately... It led to an all-out war. And first, J. Cole is the one to bounce back, and it has turned into the biggest hip-hop feud, maybe arguably biggest music feud since Biggie and and Tupac. It is up Mm -hmm. there. The biggest music feud in the last 30 years. I can confidently say that. It's a long... Yeah, this is bigger than anything that's happened recently, certainly. It's been a long time since there's been something comparable. Exactly. So you know what I'm talking about. Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. That is the beef. That is what is transcending the internet, where we have track after track after track going at it. And let me break it down for those who don't who don't know. So this is the breakdown right now. This is a hell of a breakdown. This is going to be, it's been a <laughs> wild ride. It's really Everyone gassy. take your notebooks out. <laughs> so we'll start this on March 26th. Like that comes out from Metro Boomin with a Kendrick feature where Kendrick calls out J. Cole and Drake. After mm-hmm. that, Drake releases push ups on March 19th and Taylor made freestyle. Sorry, let me start that. After Like That is dropped, Drake releases push ups April 19th. He also releases Taylor made on April 19th. Everything seems okay. People were talking about, man, you know, Drake had some mean things to say about Kendrick, nothing too serious. And then on April 30th, Kendrick releases Euphoria. Internet goes crazy last week. And this weekend alone, on March 3rd, Kendrick releases 616 in LA. Drake then releases Family Matters the same day. And then Kendrick releases Meet the Grams the the same day. And then... (laughs) On and then on Saturday, Kendrick released Not Like Us. Drake has released The Heart Part Six on Cinco de Mayo on Sunday. That's what we have right now. And in between this rap battle, literally from song after song, people have accused each other of domestic violence. Um, the P word that reminds with that rhymes with Olivia. Um we have people accusing of in of infidelity. We have people accusing each other of having uh, children that hasn't been addressed to the public. It is as personal as it can get. And at this moment, pound for pound, you could say who you prefer, but I don't know if there's a winner. I don't know if there's a I mean, I know who I 
who I think <laughs> is winning. And I'll bless that after, but we first have to talk about how we feel about this whole ordeal. But um, this is getting pretty intense. These songs have wrapped millions of views on all random platforms. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, at least nobody has seemed to tap out yet, except J. Cole, obviously. But that's the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And I've been doing a lot of research. People feel that this actually has been a feud that's been going on for over a decade. Yep. It has gone as far as back as 2013 with a Big Sean song that was released where Kendrick was featured and he called out a bunch of rappers by name, specifically Drake. And then over the past, you know, 10 years, little shots here and there. But after like that, I don't know. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, who usually only releases when it's album time, no, doesn't really throw random songs here and there. He, for some reason, is just going at it. You Man. clearly know he hates Drake. He wants to make it clear. I hate you. And Drake, no doubt. Uh, I don't I wouldn't go as far as to say hate. Hey, I don't get from the songs that he hates him. I think he definitely. What's the word? It's like he. There's no like love Drake... lost yeah. at this point. I think Drake is whether or not Drake feels as strongly about Kendrick as Kendrick very clearly feels about Drake. Drake is certainly not interested in a friendship or in any even kind of professional relationship with Kendrick Lamar. Uh, as I think no love lost might be the best way to describe what it sounds like where Drake is at. But it's so interesting, Matt, because you mentioned 2013, but 2012, I think it was 2012. Kendrick was on tour with Drake. Yes. As well, so people, like people pointing like that yeah, out. Yeah, they were cool at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 2011, Kendrick, you know, early Kendrick featured on a Drake song. 2012, they're on tour together. By 2013, all of a sudden, little shots here and there. And now, you know, 2024, they they are the two biggest names in rap music right now, uh, which I think is true and is proven to be true throughout this entire thing. And they don't like each other at all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's fun to see for a fan, but it's pretty It's getting pretty personal. Dolo, what do you think about this? This beef right now, this tension at this moment? Well, one thing I was thinking about when you were talking about how far it goes back, um, I don't know. It, well, it was always a rumored kind of thing. It started on the DJ Vlad YouTube channel. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, Vlad happy TV. My bad. Happy Cinco de Mayo, guys. I actually oh, forgot yeah. it was Cinco de Mayo <laughs> when Matt said that. I remember I remember it yesterday, but then forgot it today. So, you know, happy belated Cinco de Mayo. I guess that's how you say it. Either way. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys heard about this. Um Drake was apparently on ESPN, I think, after the Control Verse came out. And I think he was doing a show with Marcellus Wiley and uh, what's his name? Max Kellerman. Mm -hmm. So basically, Marcellus Wiley was on Vlad TV, like fast forward to like 2017 before I get to that. Uh, Marcellus Wiley's on Vlad TV talking about um, a big beef that almost ignited on ESPN. But a rapper actually had to make a call to the higher ups at ESPN to get their episode canceled. And DJ Vlad was trying to get the information out of him. Like, well, rapper, who, who's the rapper you're talking about? And Marcellus Wiley said, I'm I'm sworn to secrecy. I, I can't say anything. I might lose my job at ESPN if it comes out. Mm -hmm. So it was always like a thing. We Nobody really knew what it was about. They always figured it was either Drake or Kendrick. Right? Like, you could even... If you go back to the video, you could even read the comments like people yeah. were speculating. So mm -hmm. like and then it's not till recently where all oh, this is ignited. And then Marcellus Wiley was recently back on uh, the Vlad TV um, platform. I'd say this is like like maybe two weeks ago. And then Marcellus Wiley was like um, Vlad TV popped the question again. He's like, hey, you remember the ESPN <laughs> thing you were talking about? Who Who was that, by the way? Can you tell us by now? And then, you know, it was kind of tongue in cheek because they both knew what was up. So Marcellus Wiley was like, yeah, I could tell you now. So it, so back so back to what I was originally saying, when the control verse came out from Kendrick, Drake was on the ESPN show with Mar Marcellus Wiley and Max Kellerman. And he I guess they asked him about Kendrick. And then basically Drake is just like basically like little bro in him. Like, yeah, you know, that's you know, he's a good guy. He's a, he's OK. You know, he's not as good as me. Like, I guess he. <laughs> You know, Marcellus Wiley was just making it seem like Drake was being super braggadocious, but in like a cool, sly way. But like basically saying like, yeah, hey, he can't mess with me. And and I, I don't know how intense it was, but I guess it was intense to the point where Drake had to call 
I mean, Drake's people had to call ESPN after the show and say, hey, like, you take that. yeah, yeah, you had to make the <laughs> call. And so, you know, it, it's wild that this beef came out because it, it actually solved a puzzle from another you know, from that, <laughs> DJ, from that interview. Like, it's crazy. Like, the and, and just and, and yeah, I have a lot of thoughts about it. But that was the first thought about I had about it. But um, like the second thought I had about it was I mean, it's a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you felt like hip hop was like in a good place or like hip hop was interesting or you heard a lot of good hip hop around? I think if you're a fan of hip hop, like I know Matt listens to a lot and I don't I don't know if you do or don't, although uh, then you could probably name like a whole bunch of times. But I'm not a massive like hip hop fan. A song here or there breaks out. Usually if it's a top 40 hit, I'll hear it. Um, so I'm definitely not like, you know, the target, like hip hop listener. And it's been a very long time since I cared about hip hop as much as I care about this particular beef. I would, I would go back as far as like the early two thousands into the mid 2010s, which is when I was actually actively listening to like to rap music. Now, like I said, and that was because I was more of a fan then. And that was when I was listening more. So okay, Ryan, I, I think... can see you bumping some Lil Wayne mixtapes. <laughs> oh, Lil, <school. laughs> this is true. This is true. This is true. Uh, for the last <laughs> however many years I've had a Spotify account, uh, they do the raps right the every year. Mm. Lil Wayne is always my number one artist, and oh, my number shit. one song is always a Lil Wayne song every year <laughs> since 2019. That's been the case. Yeah. Uh, or not even maybe even 2017. I don't remember when I got my first one. Doesn't matter. It's been a right. long time. So yes, Lil Wayne. I'm a massive fan of Lil Wayne um but Uh i i mean rap is an interesting spot dolo in that i mean all really all music is an interesting spot me and matt have talked about this like famous people don't exist like they used to anymore like everything's a niche now right everything's an audience (laughs) right i mean we've talked about this matt for sure like it's happening in pop too like everything's got like a core group and they love it and then people outside the group really don't care about it at all and it's totally fine Everyone makes a lot of money. Like, but these two are like two of the last I, I know like we call Drake the pop star, right? right. But they're yeah. two of like the last real, real rap stars, like that are active and current. Cause like who's a, a, a younger than them, right? So I'm not talking like, yes, you can name older rappers who are still releasing music, but like younger than them came up after them. When again, you guys might know better. Who I guess about Bad Bunny, maybe, but that's also still kind of niche in a way, even though it's the most downloads in Spotify, you know, history. It's yeah. niche in that it doesn't fit all audiences. There's clearly audiences who don't listen to Bad Bunny because they don't know what he's saying. Uh, so Word. I don't know. I just feel like these are like two of the last like real big iconic stars in, in rap. So, of course, this is the most interesting that rap has been in a long time. So just to answer your question, the two dates that come out to mind for the last time hip hop was in a nice, peaceful, good period, I would say 2013, 2014 with these big out with these big sophomore albums like the good kid, Mad City and, mm, and Kendrick oh, right, 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 and yeah. Drake's, and, I mean, you know, to use these big three as a reference at Drake's um, not think. Yeah. Thank me. Late, not after thank me later that era. With Marvin's view, I just can't think of the album on top of my head. Um, Nothing was the same, right? Right, yeah, between you can pretty much that same range. Too, yeah. Though that range, you have J. Cole dropping um, you know, the what the with his house. Yeah, well, he's on the roof. Again. I know the one I'm talking about. We got that. We had Danny oh, Brown. Forest Hill was Drive. Big. We Forest had Hill Forest Hill Drive, Drive Schoolboy Q, Nicki Minaj. Um, all these. This era was beginning their prime. That's where I was listening, by the way. Like that's where and I kind of stopped. <laughs> the other peak of hip hop, I would say, is the Super Bowl three years ago when they had Dr. Dre, mm-hmm. Snoop, uh, and Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar right. in that. But yeah, hip hop has been an interesting transition, turning into, you know, about if we're going from. He's just getting to establish artists, gangster rap in the 90s, 2000s, more Southern rap gets bigger and all types of genres are accepted. And then a little bit in the 2010s, we then switch to more trap music, to more rappers who can't be coherent and stuff like that. (laughs) And now we're at a niche rap era, which I don't think is hard to define Mm -hmm. when you have your... You know, your Uzi verts are good, but it's more rock centric or the late right. juice world, too. 
And there's probably other ra- there's hundreds of rappers that people are saying that just dropped in the last couple of years that I just haven't discovered yet. But to put this all to a bow, now we have all these people of all genres from the earliest of Rud D of Flan of um Grandmaster Flash of Rud DMC to this little candy paint type of rappers. Everyone has mm-hmm. an opinion on it, clearly. Um that's a real rapper, by the way. I'm yeah, sure it I've is. heard that name before. Yeah, that, I, I, I believe that instantly. <laughs> yeah. And now, right here, if everybody has an opinion on it, like uh, I even saw Vid Staples talking about it recently. Mm. It's it. I feel like at least the last time rap was this tense, it legitimately got violent, and you know. Never fully proven, but a lot of people feel the early exits of some rappers with Tupac and Biggie. Um, Big L might have something to do with that. But we're at mm-hmm. a point that I don't think anyone's actually going to get hurt. This is all really an ego match. Though, definitely they're saying stuff that is fighting words, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Well, in a different add... era. Oh, sorry. Um, go ahead. No, no, Ryan, you were first. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, in a different era, Matt, I would disagree. In a different era, I would say mm-hmm. this the this this is leading there i don't i trust okay. both like For i sure. said these are two of the biggest stars in the entire genre across i'll take the l on that groups. one because you guys are right the more i think about it but I, I just don't, to be clear i don't think to be clear i don't think it will because again two of the biggest stars they're well polished they're acclaimed artists i don't think it will get there matt i think you're right like technically but like if this was earlier if this was oh. early 2000s and this happened I don't know that I would have the same confidence in what I just said. Yeah, that, I'm really that, basing it on the fact that they're they're 37 years old, both of them. They have families. Yeah, they're, they're multimillionaires. Right. They're both, you know, they've won awards. You uh, would like, hope it wouldn't go there, right? Exactly. That's Even awesome. if they're saying of f- legit fighting words. For well, here's that. the thing. There's actually something that happened recently. Um, so well, t- um, Ryan asked me before if I pay attention. If he said he doesn't know if I pay attention to hip hop as much as, uh, or, or as anyone else. Um, I would say so and so nowadays, mm-hmm. just to answer that right off there. But I keep, I keep my eyes, I keep my eyes, you know, on everything that's going on. You know, um, I'm always on social media posting the clips and stuff. You know how that goes. But um, uh, I'd say I still pay attention. I don't listen to as much hip hop, but I do know enough to, I guess, um, give it give a different take on it um so recently what uh what happened was uh the weekends uh one of the weekends i guess they called him his bodyguard but he was more of like uh so the weekend is his label is called exo and and i guess you know they got the exo chain so they're sort of like a gang like if they were doing criminal stuff they and they got caught it would be they could get a rico charge type thing probably yeah <laughs> but, um, this what, young thug this is the whole thing going on oh yeah that's crazy yeah, that that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. Free pushing thug. people, pushing actually, positivity. Actually, actually, don't pushing free. positivity. Don't free thug. Don't free thug. There's a lot of things to that to that case. Uh, that's a whole mm-hmm. other monster. But either way, um, so the weekend's bodyguard just got killed, like oh, mm. a week ago. Jeez. I think after I, I believe it was before Euphoria dropped. Okay. It was it was after like that drop for sure. Cause you know the weekend did a remix on on like that too. A lot of people did a remix on like that. Kanye did it. Uh, Kanye yeah. had Kanye had the best diss towards J he, Cole. Yes, I he swear did. he did that. Yo, it was so funny. I'm glad you heard it too. Cause I swear it, it, it's good to see. You know, like with, with with Kanye, like it's good to see that. You know, like he he can still have some humor in him. Like it was. I was. It made me laugh what he said about. It. <laughs> but uh, so basically, like uh, with 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 I when I saw that um. Apparently, like what what they're saying, uh, you know, and, and video videos that are talking about it, and other content creators that have a little bit more know how, they're saying that the the bodyguard that got killed from the XO camp was somebody that was really in the streets. Mm-hmm. So apparently, was a quote unquote shooter. Um, mm-hmm. So they're saying so. Basically, the narrative is that like that drops, weekend does a remix, the weekend shooter gets smoked like. A week after so we don't know if that's related to the drake thing but we never will yeah we probably <laughs> we probably never will yeah but then again who knows what the weekend has going on but that's kind of shocking that somebody would the thing is and i think about it a lot too because what i do outside of like you know a producing and um content creation uh i i do some work as a security guard mm-hmm. and what happened in that case 
And now that I'm actually thinking about it, I got it mixed up. So so the XO guy that got killed, um, he was just an XO guy. There, there was a security guard involved that got killed as well. And, and that so, was the person you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So now that I'm now that I got it all in my head right now. So I, sorry about that. I kind of mixed it up before. But yes, yeah, so the XO guy gets killed a week after like that drops, and then the security guard gets killed in the mix. So so basically these shooters came up and um I guess killed the security guard first. You know, no words said, boom, 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 mm-hmm. and then like, took care of the other guy. I guess it was a failed robbery that they're saying, but kind of scary that something like that would happen in the midst of all this. You, I you, mean, yeah, definitely. Like I said, I think it's been supercharged, the, the words. I mean, I just, I've listened to, uh, I listened to Family Matters, Meet the Grams, uh, Not Like Us. and Meet the Heart Grams Sex. is my personal favorite. I love that Meet beat the, so much. So Meet the Grams, I'll go on record say this, because like I said, I've said mm-hmm. all that I said in the beginning to make it clear that while I'm not up on modern hip hop, I used to listen to it quite a bit, and I also really liked diss tracks. So I used to really listen <laughs> in on this and difference because I just find it so fascinating. Because they don't do that in like no country music; they're not gonna diss each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a very yeah, rap country. Your cars broke, your wife's broke. You know what I mean? Like they don't do that. I bet in the Wild West it was probably yeah, maybe back then, but Wild West. So that's why I'm like, you know, it's a very like hip hop specific type of thing, a diss track and like a rap battle or whatever. And so I always found that very interesting. And so I listened to I listened to all of them again today, right before we got on here. And I think that Meet the Grams might be the best as, as terms of disses go, might be the best diss track, the most scathing diss track I've ever heard. Oh, it's cold. It's an amazing record. It is he, an amazing it is, record. He, I mean, just think for a second what he did. He, was, <laughs> he wrote, technically wrote a letter to Drake's parents, a <laughs> yeah. letter to Drake's son mm-hmm. by name, a yeah, letter to name. Drake's illegitimate daughter that he's claiming exists. And then at the end, he writes a letter to Drake being like, this isn't a rap beef. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and then, <laughs> With a, such just, a cold with a, such a cold and, beat and, too. in fairness this was in response to family matters which oh yeah the alchemist produced that and that was really? that was a really good yep. that was a really really good diss track it was also a very good track i, I know the, the end we're going to get into this internet has basically already crowned kendrick the winner of this feud for sure um so it doesn't really matter what happens at this point Un- i mean unless so. unless we find out like you know kendrick really did beat his partner then that might change things a little bit we find out that drake's telling the truth <laughs> that that could change things but um and obviously if we find out that kendrick is telling the truth that will that'll be a seismic shift yeah. but um so i think family matters i think he actually really did like cut pretty deep on kendrick and family matters my opinion personally i thought it was great but the the back to, and the heart, heart six is not great in my opinion no. i think he handled he handled that i, I mean it's, Just... not, it's not great it was fine but he handled the main problem. Let's be honest. The main yeah. problem is the, the as Matt called it, that P word, the PDF files. PDF, yep. All right. Um, yeah. The PDF files in the, on the computer. That was the big problem that came out in uh, Not Like Us. It was alluded to pr- prior, and then he just outright said it in Not Like Us. And Drake spent way too much time talking about it. Way, way too much time talking about it. As if he was trying to convince everyone, including maybe himself, oh. that there was no truth to any. I mean, I listen. I don't believe there's any real truth to any of things that anyone is saying. I I believe that all of them are making this up. It's a rap. Mm-hmm. None of this is real. <laughs> it's very it's, important it's that kayfabe. we. Say, yeah, it's... it's very important we say that because there's crazy people who do crazy things. But he went in so hard on that one thing, and then I mean, his defenses were, "I can't be. I'm rich." What? <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> historically that was rich, weird. Yeah. yeah, historically rich people uh get caught doing this all the time. And then like, what was it? He he mentioned a particular actress by name that no one else brought up. That was just he threw that name out there all on his own. <laughs> Millie Bolly just, Brown, right? Yeah, and then yeah, from uh, Stranger Things, he just brought yeah, her up. Who just is brought her up out of nowhere? I'm like, really Whoa. young. I think she's only twenty. Yeah, I was like, what like that doesn't really help her? your case, Drake. Yeah, right. Like, and it'd be one thing if someone else brought her up and you're addressing that. No, he freely offered a name of a young person that he's definitely not trying to have an inappropriate relationship with. I'm like, 
Yeah, that's, she's that's twenty years. She literally just turned twenty years old last. That was like uh, two that's months, a three weird way ago. to defend yourself. Um, yeah, come on, Drake. It, it's so like as well. I the, the hearts the, and then the, the misheard lyrics from the Kendrick song. I thought it was he spent way too much time on that particular topic. So that one's not for me. But those three, the family matters, um, uh, meet the Grams, and not like us. And not like us is kind of I kind of like it. Like. Outside of the disc, I like this is kind of kind of a fun song. It's really an uh, LA record. It's like yeah, it sounds like an LA record. And so, um, yeah, those three songs in this like trio, I think that they're the best by by a considerable uh, considerable margin. And I don't know if anyone else could have done those three songs, especially as fast as they did them. Yeah. Uh, what so about six one six? You don't like six one six? Nah, I mean, I it wasn't that was bad. None of them were bad, really. My my the original disses were very very diss track. What they went after race because obviously you know that's something that Drake specifically can get tagged with a little bit more. Went up with and Kendrick his... revoked the uh, the pass. Yes, correct. Um, it went after like his socioeconomic the socioeconomic differences between the two. Try to get under his skin. The Canadian thing, you know. So like that was pretty like standard stuff. Same as like when Drake called him Pipsqueak. Uh, like <laughs> so that's like that's just very standard. Like you're making fun of somebody, so you know what I mean. Like he's Piss basically if he you called thought, him if short. You, and yeah, then, and then he you came thought, at his whole yeah. life after that. So if you look at it, it's basically uh, Kendrick called Drake a fraud. Drake called him short, <laughs> and then all of a sudden they just went after each other with like the heat of a thousand suns after their kids after their wives after their parents after you know crimes they've allegedly committed um can't so, say it any better bro yeah so i would say the first ones are fine but they're not the they're not those three those three that is a crazy jump um i i agree with mostly of what you're saying to be honest i there's nothing really that i disagree with you honestly with um but uh, wh- wh- I I want to say a lot about Drake, but I want to make a comparison before I do it. And I made this comparison. Floor is yours. To, um, to Matt, um, like a day or two ago, I think. Um, and it's it's gonna be kind of a nerd nerdy kind of cross reference. So this is for the <laughs> nerds. Um, at this moment, and just in, and just in general, right? Um, have you guys watched Samurai Jack on Toonami? Long time Le- legendary samurai Back Jack, when it which... was on not tsunami <laughs> or when it was like first on rather on Cartoon okay Network. yeah we're we're all millennials here so, yeah we know like, samurai yeah, jack yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so and and um and uh this is more recent i don't know if you guys ever played uh god of war ragnarok i've not i know it but i haven't played it okay so you've I heard haven't about played it. it but very familiar with it yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've definitely, yeah, me and, yeah, I've definitely shared some clips with Matt before. Too. Definitely. It's definitely the next big game show adaption that Hollywood's going to go after. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it, it's in the works. It's in the works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the reason I bring it up is because right now I see Kendrick, right? I see Kendrick as Samurai Jack. And mm-hmm. who I see Drake as, I see him as Odin. From God of from God of War Ragnarok, not Odin from the actual mythology, but mm-hmm. from the Ragnarok mythology, because he's a little bit different from like the real life. Of, not too different, but mm-hmm. um, there's certain specific things that I, I I cross reference in my head between them two. But um, yeah, I see Drake as Odin from God of War Ragnarok. Um, but to talk about Kendrick, Samurai Jack, right? He he's um, it, it even says it in the theme song. He's like, gotta get back. Back to the past, Samurai Jack. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, he he's he almost kills Haku, and you know, then Haku sends him back and in, in, sends him to the future, mm-hmm. and you know, he he almost got that that killing blow, but then you know he couldn't do it, and now Samurai Jack is in like a futuristic world, right, where he's stuck to the old samurai ways, you know, the the old swordsmanship ways, and you know, from his era, from his time yeah. era. And he's an outsider. He he doesn't understand anything that's going on in the future world. And everything is different. The whole world has changed on him. But the one thing that hasn't changed is that Samurai Jack still wants to kill Haku. <laughs> and he's still he's still a badass. 
still yeah. has that still has that grudge against him hasn't let it go mm-hmm. yeah that grudge and that and that um and i and i cross reference it to with kendrick because you know his pen is really his sword Ken, kendrick is really a throwback even when you listen to mr morale even when you think back to section 80 the the um the overly dedicated mixtape the um you know good kim as city all of that he he's really one of the last true hip hop artists in a mm-hmm. in a like a SoundCloud bubblegum world. Kind right. of, yeah. A true so MC, six, if you will. Yes. Yep. Yes. True MC. He embodies that. And he's one he's probably the last. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I would I'm, say so. I would consider this beef probably the last real hip hop beef. You don't think the ringer wrote it? a whole thing about that. You don't think the little candy paint and him beefing with little meatball going to get big? I'm kidding. Little meatball. <laughs> nah, I'm, I mean, I'm team little meatball because I assume he's a, a, a an Italian guy from Staten Island. I'm kidding. That's, I'm killing No, nah, that's that's but, because that's because you guys haven't listened to little toenail. Little toenail. Now, when I put y'all a little, when I put y'all on the little toenail, it'll change the conversation. But either way, that's for another day. <laughs> um. So yeah, I see Kendrick as that, and in his in his world, Haku is Drake. You know. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the person to get to. And um, I didn't really cross-reference Haku to Drake because it's, it's a little different. I like the Odin reference better because mm-hmm. when we look at Odin from God of War Ragnarok, to tell you a little bit about him, um, so he's he's portrayed more as like a mobster, right? Mm-hmm. And he's portrayed, he's a god. He's a god, but um, his what I would call his biggest strength is his ability to manipulate and his ability to gather worldly things and to basically have the world on his side and conquer everything because he conquered all the nine realms in god of war ragnarok Mm -hmm. and that's like drake right now he'll go to atlanta pick up an artist from atlanta get them hot then lead them to die just like just like odin did with the dwarves and and us i think svartfelheim i forget the the names of the realms are kind of weird um (laughs) that's all right though yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys get the point. Um, and then you know, it's it's like you know, he'll go to New York and mess with a rapper, and then you know, just use them for a look, and then you know, do nothing for them after. And and that's kind of like Odin. Every realm that he went to, he wanted to conquer, and he left it worse than when he came in. And he used it completely to his benefit. And he's someone that like he's someone that he thinks if he has everything like these worldly things, he thinks he can always win. If he has, if he could find something out that the other person doesn't know, he will win. Or if he has a magic that he can use, he'll win. And that's like with Drake, when when he said to Kendrick, um, uh, you want to take up for Pharrell? They come get the legacy out of my house with with, with all the Pharrell chains, which were dope. I, I, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I want to, I'm going to go biblical on Drake soon, but I do respect <laughs> the fact that he collected those on Star Trek chains. Like those are really <laughs> classic chains. I'm, I am jealous of that. I'm not going to hold you, but um, yeah. I, and the thing is with Odin at the end of God of War Ragnarok, you know, Trace is talking to him, you know, God of War and God of War Ragnarok, pretty much Odin kills his, his own son, Thor, you know, as soon as he disobeys him, he kills him. And that that could be a reference to like I don't know the weekend, you know it, how he ruined his relationship with the weekend. I don't know. Um, but the point I'm trying to get to is that at the end, Odin basically tells Atreus. Atreus tries to get him to the good side, and Odin says, "I I can't help it. I I I need to have it. I need to know more. I can't stop until I know everything. I can't stop." And then he dies. And then, and then the dwarf comes and crushes the vessel that his soul went to, and that was pretty funny. But uh, and I see Drake right now is, you know, obviously, you know, like Ryan said before, I I see him as a loser, just as uh, the loser at this moment, as the rest of the internet sees it as well. But yeah, it's just he's fighting a battle that he'll never he'll never win, and that was Odin's thing. Um, Grow a lie to him about the prophecy. And Odin was working on a false prophecy. Drake was working probably on false info about, about Kendrick. You know, it's not proven that he beat his wife, you know. Oh, none of it's proven. To be, just gotta yeah. be clear again. You're right. <laughs> For anyone you're right. listening, none of it's proven. Please do not 
harass these well, individuals. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot has been proven, but some weird stuff has been shown about Drake, and I'll get to that soon. But just to finish it, finish off that reference, yeah, I see, I see Drake as the one losing and the one that that was always meant to ultimately lose because he can't fight, you know, someone like Samurai Jack, who's yeah. true to the sword, and is hasn't missed a step. And you don't see him a lot, but he hasn't missed a step. Yeah. And I think the culture has shown that. And not to be too long winded, but like, like Drake, Drake has been completely exposed here. I, in my mind, he's been completely exposed. Um, there were there were things that came up, you know, when the PDF accusations came out, you know, um, these were things that were flowing around for a while. And, you know, with Drake being like the top rapper in the world and one of the top artists in the world in the past few years, like no one's going to touch that. Right. No one's going to touch that subject when it comes to him, probably ruin a relationship or connection with him. Right. K-Dot, Dot doesn't care. K-Dot doesn't care at all. He has nothing to lose. He knows what he knows who he is and he knows what he does. And 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 the thing is, like. uh, like Drake has kind of shown himself to be a little bit immature in this where Kendrick, you know, Drake comes out with a braggadocious family matters, which I did like, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool. I can't lie completely, but he had too many targets to shoot at. You know, he, he, he didn't get, I don't really, really feel like those any shots at K dot really landed, but K dot went directly. Like Ryan said, K dot went directly for his family, right? You know, wrote a creative record without using AI, without using some AI stuff. And I, Legally, I just want to sorry. Legally yeah, speaking, yeah. Drake, Drake legally can't be using AI. I will put it that way. If it came out that Drake was using AI in a proven way, he'd lose a lot of money because of his contract. Just want, again, want to throw that bit of information out there. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I don't think the Tupac estate was too happy about it. Either. No, that was a real problem actually, because he was because he used it. Yeah, they they yeah. pulled that. That you can't hear that song anywhere now. It, the fact that he used it in a diss song too was kind of corny. If he had used it, yeah. in creative, if he had used it in a creative concept for a song on an album, that'd have been cool. I'm not gonna lie, sure, I would have yeah. liked it. But uh, to use it as a diss against K Dot, like you, mm-hmm. that was yeah, like like I said before, he was fighting a battle, and Drake is still fighting a battle that he he was never gonna win and he can't win. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, you know, and then Kendrick comes out, and then he's really digging to the soul, you know like dig into the to really trying to get under Drake's skin, dig into who he is as a person, the very fabric of his being. And it's yeah. just different. You hear it in the music. You know, some people mm-hmm. are gonna like Drake. They're gonna like the braggadocious stuff. You know, that's more of the 50 cent lane. And, and you've you also know, not it, I do keep that thought. I'm just saying you also see for the people who really defend Drake, and there is a good amount. I can't deny crazy. that. He's got fans, yeah. It's crazy. But they're completely wrong. And hey, well, keep <laughs> explaining why they're being delusional on this, please. Keep well, a lot of those fans, off. a lot of those fans are young, man. Like Drake really did go to pop route and he's been dropping albums yearly year after year. You got him give him the credit for being consistent. Cause like Jadakiss said, you know, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. But in this case, it doesn't really apply because K Dot really just like crushed them completely in this, you know, with his hiatus and just coming out with a but uh, with with Meet the Grams, that was my favorite diss track. You know, after Family Matters, in fact, he dropped it an hour later. And mm-hmm. if you check on YouTube, the numbers say it, and numbers really shouldn't matter. I think that's K Dot's whole point. That like you know, like you said, it's a lot of goofies with a check. He don't care about that. K Dot mm-hmm. doesn't care about that. Um, but the funny thing is, you know, he's Samurai Jack. He's he he got it no matter what. The numbers say it. The numbers tell the story. That the culture it, it looks like the culture is messing with K-Dot in this. And and you know, when not not like us, the fact that he dropped that, you know, you I honestly didn't think K Dot was capable of dropping like that. To me, that's like a piggy bank record. That's like <laughs> that's like a that's like a for them, that's a West Coast anthem right now. That you know, all the OGs are like crip walking to on Instagram and <laughs> TikTok and shit. It's, it's actually really funny. But um that's got a lot of cross, I think that's got a lot of cross uh audience appeal too. As some again, I, I saw people, I like that song. I was at a bar where they were playing yeah. those two songs. That track, it's really they that cool. Like and us. if it, they're not like, sorry, no, you're right. You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Keep it. Keep. I encourage that energy. And assuming they're really coming up with all these well produced, mostly, 
not all, but most if those six tracks, mostly well produced tracks within hours of each other. I know, and they're right? clearing their schedules, clear they're busy people. Like, like, nah, this is more important. This will get any attention that you're looking for that someone in the PR department is trying to drag you in. Like, nah, I am going for this. There is literal dignity on the line and reputations are on the line. Most important. That's probably the biggest thing here is legitimate reputations on the line after this. And even if we talked about, and we'll finish it towards the end because I still want to hear your guys' points, but just remember, people will remember how these artists are recept. Are people will remember how these artists? Sorry, these people will remember the legacy of these two artists solely between this time and twenty twenty four. I think it's that much at stake. Solely? If you care, not solely, not on a, <laughs> not on a world renowned level, not on an right. entire body of work, but this moment, this beef is sure. pivotal and see where you go after the fact like they're definitely rock roll hall of famers if you care about that they're definitely hip-hop legends but i mean yeah, maybe drake's on but um how you're perceived well, after the fact do, yeah you it, if drake didn't do after that this. then he will be right i, like, first, say, though, I, 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 I just want to finish my point and then all you two um like in j cole who was originally in this who bowed <laughs> out whether that was righteous or not, people will remember J. Cole as you're the dude who ran away from, from the, the big smoke. Three. Yeah, you were the big three until you decided you weren't anymore. You yeah. stepped aside, and now there's just two. There's no big three. And I would per- agree with that 100. percent And he personally shouldn't care. And he has so much money that he's right. really laughing his way to the bank. But if you care about in the sense of a legacy, how you will be remembered, I think he should take it a little more seriously. Yeah, he, well, he gave, he gave up his him. spot. He gave it's up over it. And now we'll have these two titans coming at it. See, bar for bar where this goes. Please continue your point, Ryan. And so I was going to say, my only thing with this, and uh, with all the talk on the internet, you know, and you know, we know how fans get. We're fans of a lot of different things. So talk about the, you know, this could ruin somebody. This, could, I mean, obviously crimes are bad, but assuming there's no crimes, um, both Kendrick Lamar and Drake belong to Universal Music Group. So the only people who are actually winning truly, like, is Kendrick winning? Is Drake winning? No, Universal Music Group is winning mm. because all of their numbers are shooting through the roof on, roof on streaming right now. They are some of the most watched clips on YouTube right now because of these diss tracks. And you know what they're never going to let happen? They're never going to let one of these two people who I think, I mean, right now, they're like Matt said, they're the titans, right? They're the two people on top. They're the last two great rap stars. They have different philosophies that, you know, one is the 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 last MC. The other one is like one of the first pop star rappers, right? Like Drake back at the beginning has always been kind of pop meets hip hop. He was always yeah. looking for that mainstream connection. So, you know, Kendrick is the last of an old breed. You know, Drake is the original of the new breed of this, you know, pop centric hip hop sound that was predominant when I was listening in the 2000s and 2010s. And so they're going to make sure both these folks stay as high up on people's minds as possible the whole time. Neither one of them is going to be able to get rid of the other one because Universal Music Group gets paid off of all of it. I think there's a a famous rap uh, diss track called No Vaseline that uh, mm-hmm. states that. You guys can look up the lyrics. I'm certainly I'm too white to give you the lyrics right now. But uh, <laughs> from the great Ice Cube. Yeah, Ice Cube made it very clear um, that there's certain individuals who get paid off of all of the beef, and that's what's <laughs> happening with Universal Music Group right now. So anyone who thinks that one of them is gonna win, no. Universal is going to win because they're going to keep both of them standing. They're going to prop them up weekend at Bernie style, make them keep hitting each other oh, and just taking that money if they need it. So I, I think that's important. I don't know where this ends, but it ends with, you know, it ends with uh, Universal making a lot more money and keeping both of their cash cows uh, pretty well situated so they could always revisit it down the road if they want to. That's And that might be the most insidious part of all of this. We're going after people's families. And there's a, a a large corporation that's just making tons and tons of money off of it, um, and they're gonna they're gonna keep it happening because it's it's what makes them money. They're you know this is the most money they've probably made off of both these artists in a really long time. Uh, so I don't know. I I I think there's something interesting about that. 
I wonder if Kendrick will eventually address that, that he's putting money into Drake's pocket every time he takes a piece of his soul. Uh, <laughs> and I wonder if, and I wonder if Drake will ever acknowledge that every time he makes, you know, a major track in, in, in belittles Kendrick for not being, you know, a, a hit maker. The hit money is going to Kendrick on his next deal, too, because all of it goes universal. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're both like, it's so weird how they're they're together in so many ways they're so well linked and yet they're opposites it's just so strange but yeah the universal aspect of this is something i haven't seen fans talk about because it's still really exciting to get into the who's hitting who and how hard are they hitting them but hopefully the fans will eventually realize that because i think that that that's important too my only caveat yeah. to that is i just don't think i think they really care more about just like, sure, because you're just at the end of the day talking more corporate stuff, being corporate, 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 yeah. money, money, money. And everything you said is true about that. But I think beyond that, beyond the corporate um, title with this, they really want to see who is the one to really establish that nobody can truly mess with me. Nobody will dare to do a diss track against me. Nobody will question my legacy. I mean, for a wrestling reference, it's easy to say, but I think it's true. Who's the one to acknowledge the other? And mm-hmm. um, I think that beyond beyond the, the insane deep pockets these people will get, I think that's even a little more important there because certainly still to the make, two, yeah, yeah, certainly to Drake and Kendrick. Yes, I agree. They're doing this for ego, hundred percent. They want to know who's the best, who can't, you know, who's going to be the untouchable one. I agree, Matt. I was just kind of on the side. Behind of all course. of this, there's there's a group of people who you've never heard of just going like this. the Jerry Trainer. <laughs> oh yeah, they're making real money off of this. I think uh I think in this case it's it's a rare thing where like you know the labels win and also the fans win. That's rare. Mm-hmm. It's rare when the labels win and the fans win. I think the fans are winning. And like Ryan said, people are just caught up in the um the battle right now. So um people aren't realizing that yeah, Universal's banking right right now and all of from us. both, right? They don't care who wins. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. especially with just the random drops and the like the youtube revenue of like euphoria i i saw two days ago at 15 million and that's hundreds of thousands of dollars alone yeah. that kendrick will make off that shit off that one track that maybe and then i hope i there's got to be some awesome documentary someday that'll come out in the next five years maybe i mean it should be longer but these people make these documentaries quick um mm-hmm. explaining this i just want to know like especially just the song, the, the producing the songs right away. And it shows similarly to the, uh, when we were talking about the uh, bridge cleanup in the sense that if you really want something and you have the money <laughs> for it, you will produce it. Yeah. If money happen. is no, if money is no object and time is not a problem, you could do some pretty incredible things too bad. That's not most people's every day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Della, what else do you have to say? Then we'll um do some final thoughts on this and go through a few more stories that we have left. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I guess to finish it off, uh, uh, I could have been a lot more harsh on Drake. I'm being 100% honest with you, and I, I wanted to originally be, but I think everyone got their points out, and and I guess, yeah, we're all kind of on the same, like, uh, agreements and kind of the same level here, but, um, uh, and I like that, but I want to, um, I want to make one more comparison, uh, or a cross-reference, I guess, so, uh, being a boxing fan, I used to I used to really study, and I mean study to a T, Floyd Mayweather Jr. I've watched so many fights of his, from Demarcus Corley to Diego Corrales to Oscar to Roberto Robert Guerrero, all of them, Pacquiao, all of them. Um, one thing that he always said about his career, and I don't know if you remember Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, as he was rising through the ranks, uh, he didn't. Nobody really liked him. People hated <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, probably for good reason, you know, um, uh, beating your baby mother in front of your kid, you know, that, right. that, that'll make okay. you lose fans. Yeah. That'll make you lose fans. Um, you know, just, uh, being racist towards Mexicans and Filipinos. Yeah. That yeah, you, you're probably gonna lose fans. Mm-hmm. Um, some people didn't like him saying all lives matter. You know, you're going to lose some fans there. Uh, the, the thing, the thing he would say that I, I that you, no one could really argue with is that, that I feel like no one could argue with is that, uh, he would say if he would say like Americans don't back me, um, like uh, if I he said if he was Mexican or if he was Japanese or something else that uh his country would have his back 
but because he's met he's american um everyone's critical of him and nobody likes him and you know like uh he always wanted that it's something that you could tell kind of that i believe kind of bothered floyd that america didn't really have his back um and that people didn't like him uh you know he was he was revered more better after his career but i see yeah. i see like i see this as an opportunity for like you know with kendrick being from compton from compton la i see this and i'm and i'm an east coast guy as we are as we are as well but like you know that's still kind of home team where you know it's still you know he's west coast like that's culture that we grew up on from america kind of thing and I kind of see it as a home team thing. I, I almost have to go with K Dot thinking about that kind of stuff. You know, I think about you know Mayweather Jr. not getting the flowers he deserved during his career. You know, um, and, and you know just how critical I guess Americans can be towards like you know artists and just people in general, entertainers and stuff like that. Um, I, that's part of like my my thing. Like you know, I, I got to ride with home team. I, I I can't ride with Toronto. I can't ride with Canada. I like Park. <laughs> Car is cool. She's real cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot ride with Canada on this one. Um, yeah, I got to ride with home team and it's k out all the way. And I think he's clearing it. Man, I think you said it best. Oh, if let me say this respectfully for even for all those Drake and OVO fans who definitely, you know, like who you like the Drakeys, but I don't get how you can hear any of these tracks especially on a lyrical level, a creative level, and downright entertaining level, and say that this guy is better than Kendrick Lamar. Let's be real. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with being a number two. There's nothing wrong with being a Scottie Pippen or <laughs> being a, um, you know, being a Kyrie like or Like Charlemagne LeBron. said. Like Charlemagne said, put your number twos in the air if you did it on them. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, Kendrick Lamar stated with many reasons and with many different voices, cadences, and lyrics that he is way better than Drake in this beef. And if anybody doubts me, please DM me. I would love to have a conversation about it. But Kendrick is no doubt. And I hope this just ends with, you know, Nobody getting hurt where it does turn into war and then nobody wins. But ultimately, Kendrick Lamar is the greatest to ever do it in this generation. And he's better than Drake. And I'll end this by saying I checked today because on our previous versions of this, I usually took the Drake side of all of this. Um, I have on my Spotify liked songs, 10 Kendrick Lamar tracks to six Drake checks. I want to make that clear when I say this next bit. Kendrick, as well as Drake, has gone with calling Drake the hitmaker. Now, Kendrick is doing it a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Drake, certainly dead serious when he says it. But uh, I think there's something to that. However, a hit, you don't have to be good to be famous. You don't have to have, a hit doesn't have to be the uh, you know a masterpiece i think that kendrick has consistently proven that from all of the most technical levels with the exception of maybe the number of people bobbing their head along on the radio which is a big number in music it's how you get paid but with with that one exception kendrick has outclassed drake pretty thoroughly as matt said the lyrics are better i would say that the songs even just for like they're they're more fun Except for, I mean, not that Meet the Grams is fun, but you get what I'm saying. Like, they're all Bro more interesting. Bars. They're all more fun. They're all lyrically better. Um, I don't think this changes the hitmaker thing. I think there's a reason that both of them have landed on that nickname for Drake. Because I think it's true. We don't have to like it. Right. But uh, what is it? Um, what is it? One Dance? One Dance is a silly. I was Because I was looking today at all their top songs. Has a silly amount of downloads on Spotify. Like, ridiculous um i didn't even know that many people were on spotify to put it to put oh, wow. it that way. so you, he's he, again i think this won't change that he'll still make plenty of hits there'll be plenty of people dancing to drake songs next year the year after two years after in a club in a bar whatever but when people talk about you know rap music 
like history, I think the only time Drake's going to come up is right now. Oh, it's shit. when he lost to Kendrick. He's going to be a, he's a phenomenal, very again, phenomenal artist. He has all the accolades he could ever want. He'll make tons more money provided he's not a criminal. Uh, but he will always be in like the history of rap music. Whereas I think when you look at the last real beef, we haven't said it yet, but let's be honest. It's like Tupac and Biggie. We've been alluding to it all night. No one ever really said, I mean, people have a preference, but everyone kind of assumes like it was even. I think that this chapter of rap history is going to pretty well say that the two biggest stars duked it out again. And this time somebody actually won. I don't think there's any way around that. Again, I like Drake. I've defended him on this show. I think some of the songs are good. Family Matters, I think, is great. It's probably in the top of, it's of about, these six tracks. It's about. Um, so no disrespect. He's clearly head and shoulders better than most anyone else in rap right now in terms of at that level. But he's been outclassed. <laughs> uh, in, maybe he was, again, maybe you're right. It was Destiny. Uh, maybe there was a version where he you know, focused a little less on some of the claims, a little more on uh, pointing out Kendrick's weaknesses, which there are some. And again, Family Matters does a great job of pointing them out, um, I think, personally. But he didn't do that, um, and he can't take it back. So I think that when it's all over, that's what we're going to be thinking about uh, for years to come. You know, I knew Drake was a pop star when he released Marvin's Room. <laughs> that was he has a the song called it. Pop Star. <laughs> oh, shit. Which I happen to really like, oh, by the way. Drake it's a and DJ Kendrick. Khaled song. Uh, Drake, Drake and Kendrick. Called Pop Star. It's a great song. I like it. Drake and Kendrick, am I right? You're right. We're as productive as that was as productive a conversation as you can have. And we will see where this all goes. So let's let's fit in a few more stories for the tweet cab that it will be the record for longest one segment, but rightfully mm. so. Yeah. Not a problem at all. Just quickly, two things. One story that literally just dropped now. I just had to share it. It's funny enough. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go to the um, the other thing I've been looking forward to talking about. Or I'll save that. I'll save that at the end. But okay. um, Gilbert Arenas, you guys know who he is? Former NBA mm-hmm. All-Star, uh, mm-hmm. co-nightcap host. And um, he has another show, The Gilbert Arenas Show. <laughs> So NBA playoffs are now, and don't forget to check out our NBA playoff show throughout the entire NBA postseason, me and Fresh Faces, as we've been covering the NBA playoffs. So game one, sorry, so right now, Minnesota Timberwolves are playing the Denver Nuggets. Game two of that series is Tuesday night. Sorry, no, it's Monday night. They're playing that tonight. And um, Timberwolves are up one to nothing. And, you know, the corn, cornering the reigning champions. Rudy Gobert just had a child today. He had a child today. He had a kid. Um, he, yeah, he became a father today. Shouts to the center for the Timberwolves. Yeah, he's probably one the center. Hell yeah. yeah. And probably one of the only, probably one of only two people in the entire league who could actually guard Jokic. So... <laughs> And yeah. in all serious, that's a big deal. Yeah. Like Jokic literally doesn't even try and he's turning into an all time great. And why the Nuggets are such a heavy favorite because of him. And you have the one player who can actually go toe to toe with him, but he is on paternity leave paternity leave. Oh, he's on paternity leave. So here's the thing. Gilbert Arena is literally on the Gilbert Arena show oh, getting God, prepared so for this it's game it's and to watch it. To All right, Gilbert Arena. Here's the tweet just 10 minutes ago. Gilbert Arenas calls out Rudy Gobert for missing a playoff game for the birth of his child. The quote is, it's a, hear this, it's a baby, bro. It's going to be there when you get back. (laughs) Where it got us an actual quote. I agree. Yeah, do you agree or not? Obviously, I disagree with Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby, bro. It'll be there when you get back. Uh no. And he's literally listen, hours old. Listen, family is for, <laughs> family is forever. Uh when you can win it next year. Um No, you we can't. can't. You no, can't. Sir, sir. You can win it next year. And you know what? If you never win the championship, but you can look your 
son or daughter in the eye and say, I didn't make a game more important than you. I think that's worth it. I do see why if you're a fan, you might feel a little bit like I, I, I don't anyone who just thinks totally without any hesitation that the right answer is to go play basketball. I don't know what to tell you. You're insane. But I can see as a fan, you might be like, what if like, can you do oh. both? Can't you be there in the morning? And we'll let you skip practice, but can you please come in time? Like, go in your shorts, right? Like, meet them in your uniform and come at halftime. Like, I could see, I could see how a fan might really want to try and figure out a way for him to play. Um, but yeah, Gilbert think, Arenas, Gilbert Arenas, yeah. But ultimately, I do think that this is the right decision for years to come. I don't believe he would regret this decision. Whereas if he made the opposite decision, I think he'd probably still lose the game anyway, and then he'd instantly regret not being oh, there when shit. his child was born. Uh, oh, that's my man. thought. Oh, man. He got A.E. He got Anthony Edwards right now, bro. He has Carl Anthony Towns, bro. They're not injured, bro. They need him, bro. They need <laughs> him. The baby can wait. Well, now, nah, all right, so, <laughs> so... So to be for real, nah, yeah, I get it. No, 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 yeah. Um... The baby was the baby was literally just born and they having these kind of conversations is the absolute <laughs> nuts. That is wild. That is absolutely nuts. But I mean I mean it is it's just bad timing, bro. It's it's like it's just bad timing. Um I know Gobert's been in the league for a little while. Um, he started he started COVID. <laughs> he started oh yeah. COVID. Oh yeah. he did do the COVID thing. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> he has a reputation to clean up. Nah, he's gotta go get a championship. <laughs> but like all, all this is tough. They, they pay these guys a lot of money, man. So I could I, I I understand it. I do understand it. But if if they if the team let him go on paternity leave, then I mean that's 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 the team's decision. They probably they have to. <laughs> to be clear, I think they legally probably have to. But Probably. um, we'll, also we'll, I think it's the right choice. We will just have to see how the game two goes. Maybe they much win. What if they win without him? I mean, Do it that's, for the that's, baby. That'd be insane. Minnesota team... goes up 2 0 on the road against the reigning champions. We are a heavy favorite. You might have a without... chance. Oh, oh, I, I got something to say. I, I just yeah, thought yeah. of something. Um, Chris Sean Rock, the, the, the girl that was going out with Blueface, she had a baby <laughs> and took that baby on a tour, on a on a national oh, nationwide tour God. from club to club from that's significantly and less good than missing a basketball game <laughs> yeah no it, it's horrible okay it is a horrible example but it, it, it it's 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 possible in a universe it is it is possible he could have missed it for sure <laughs> crazy. oh man for the baby let me just go into the next segment to save time the rock we're about to do a rock story not mm. wrestling, but The Rock has been getting into some heat. Hear this, right? Last week, it was reported that Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Ryan Reynolds, who were stars of the movie Red Notice, allegedly got in a legitimate fight after the wrestler continually, continually would alive. Ah, fuck. Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Ryan Reynolds allegedly got into a fight while filming Red Notice after the wrestler constantly arrived late to set. G come on. The Rock... Man, what a six months this guy has had. I mean, obviously, the wrestling stuff has been well covered here. He is one of the big reasons why wrestling is mainstream again. At the same time, his Hollywood career took a huge PR hit after the epic failure of Black Adam. Oh, yeah. While trying to hold together his Hollywood career, rejuvenize wrestling, and, you know, just trying to be the final boss he is. We also are hearing reports of him being difficult to work with on set, which is something you do not want to be known as in Hollywood. And then you have Ryan Reynolds, who really is one of the biggest stars, if not just as big or bigger than The Rock, and them having a fight, allegedly, which nobody has confirmed or denied in the last six days. Wait, a physical and fight? Yeah, alleg allegedly a legitimate fight. You with... couldn't pay me to physically fight The Rock. Well, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. He's ripped. I mean, it's what they did at the gym. It's nothing to be The Rock. Yeah. The I Rock's agree. The Rock is six foot eleven, and it has nothing to do with the gym. <laughs> Seriously. But I'm just saying though, why is The Rock? Why you for somebody who and I love The Rock. No one loves The Rock as much as me. That's true. But but like, you can't. 
you know, practice what you preach about being, you know, the great person you I do think are. But if you're just being tardy all the time, getting in fights with A-list celebrities and just being known as difficult to work with, it's kind of hard to, you know, uphold that. I, it was, it's definitely great to add for your Rock Heel character, but not everybody's a wrestling fan. So I can't, unfortunately, unfortunately, wrestling isn't um, real life. That's what they tell me. But um, <laughs> it's fake. But but the thing is here, though, for in, regardless for Dwayne Johnson, though, who beyond the wrestling aspect, known as this hard worker and, you know, be good to people and all of that. It just sucks to hear that he's allegedly a pain in the ass to work with. Yeah, I don't know Hollywood standpoint. Yeah, I don't know that I feel that that's I don't know that I'm surprised by that allegation. I told you that, Matt. Um, Selfishly, I do like that this is going to free him up for more of my stuff Um, (laughs) uh, uh, because he's not going to get as many gigs. But um, yeah, I don't know that I'm shocked that The Rock, especially now, has a bit of an ego. One of the biggest stars on the planet. Uh, And he didn't come necessarily from like, you know. Say what you will about, like, Nepo babies, right? But because they grew up in that, like, environment, because they grew up in, like, the fame circle, they kind of know how to be famous. Like, they grew up learning how to be famous. It was part Mm -hmm. of their childhood, learning how to do that. And The Rock, I mean, his father was a wrestler, so in that circle, he had a bit of an advantage, but not in, like, global superstardom like he is currently now. And so he's a regular person who ended up being the biggest star on the planet uh, for a time being anyway. And so the idea that he maybe let that get to his head, I, that doesn't shock me. Uh, I think it would get to my head if I were the rock. Uh, so I don't know that this will completely ruin his chance. I mean, I know he keeps talking about how he wants to do real movies and like go for awards and like, you know, serious projects. This will probably hurt that because no serious directors and serious cast are going on to deal with, you know, the rock big leaguing them <laughs> every turn, mm-hmm. but a big budget action movie looking for a marquee to draw people in every summer. They're never going to say no to the rock. You know what I mean? Like Jumanji 14. They're not gonna be like, uh-uh rock was way too hard to work with. They basically Jumanji sell that thing 14. off the back of, you no, know, they sell those things off the back of the rock and Kevin Hart. So I think he'll be just fine in terms of his career, but he may not get to reach his, personal goals of you know achieving uh critical acclaim if the critically successful actors and directors find him to be a bit too you know boorish and a bit too uh full of himself to work with well i mean you guys are more wrestling fans than me um but i i and clearly i'm i'm a millennial so of course i'm well aware of the rock and Who the rock you know, is, yeah. yeah I, I would say i know a little bit i know a little bit um it doesn't surprise me honestly that to hear something like that i agree it really wouldn't surprise me i mean even like even heard with people like i guess before kanye kind of villainized himself in the media uh <laughs> it, there were always rumors of him being like a prick like a really kanye like, yeah like re- like a nasty person so None of it really, none of it should really surprise you. I mean, uh, it's just, uh, I, I know The Rock, uh, The Rock is almost like a Michael Jordan where like, he's just one of those like permanently famous people. Yes. And people are always going to know him. He's just a huge star. So just off rib, just off, off of that alone, I would believe he'd probably maybe walk around with an ego, treat people like kind of some people might be lower than him in his mind. But, uh, um, I know he's a. Uh, I know he's talked about political stuff. I I almost have a feeling he wants to be like a president, like he wants to run for presidency. I mean, he said it out loud. Multiple oh, he times. did. Uh, I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I never heard him say it. It just yeah. seemed like it because he talked about it one time. I heard on. But then he says he's not gonna do it. He goes back and forth. Um, to be clear, since obviously you know, I think The Rock is entitled to feel like he's conquered the world because he has. Right. Um, I don't know that that means you can be mean to people or you can be late and waste people's times. But yeah, no. uh, what I'm saying, I'm not saying it, I'm not I'm not trying to be like judgment call. The Rock's a jerk. I'm just saying the idea that The Rock has an ego. Not surprising. Like people who have done far less 
good for society, success in their career, have an ego. So the idea that yeah. The Rock, who has done a lot of good for people and who has been very successful, would also have an ego, I think, is is unsurprising. That's kind of the point I was making. I'm not going to make the judgment call. I believe it. I don't believe it. You know, that makes him a good person, makes Ryan Reynolds a bad person or a good person. I'm not going to get into any of that. Just not at all shocked, in my opinion. You know, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if it was true. But um, I do. I did see that. Um, it, it's 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 kind of funny that him and Ryan Reynolds had a real fight because I saw some footage of The Rock training for MMA. I think he's thinking about that move. He might be thinking about jumping into the. Octagon. Yeah, he's doing the. He's doing he the. He's be. doing an MMA movie. That's what he's, he's doing. doing. A movie, yeah. Yeah, he's hey. not going in there for real. Hey, he might. Years old. He might. He might not. I mean, well, CM Punk was pretty old when he did, but that was a bad move for CM Punk as well. <laughs> that was. Home. I mean, yeah. I think The Rock, by the way, as big as he is, would be a worse move. He's old. I mean, he hurt himself. He really is old, huh? He hurt himself this past April. Uh, and like, yeah, it's not. Oh, uh, okay. I wasn't yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's out of the question. He's here. he's not fit enough. His bones and his muscles are they're not attached to his body the way they need to be to be a, a, an actual MMA fighter. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> it seems like it, it seems like he had a, he had just enough for Ryan Reynolds at least. So that's well, good. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to ask to end the segment, Matt. Rock versus Ryan Reynolds. Who do you have? We'll have to go with the the people's champ on this one. Okay, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, Matt. <laughs> All right, yeah, you, you can't pick Ryan Reynolds in that fight. How, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> All right, final story right here, guys. Um, and let's get into it right here. Sunday night was the roast of Tom Brady, a huge success for Netflix. It's pretty much. Tom Brady went to the L.A. Forum and got roasted by his old teammates, his old coaches, various comedians, various celebrities, and everybody was talking about it all over Twitter. Nobody held back. People went in, and it was a very, a very, very funny night. Guys, what did you think about this? What were some of the best jokes you heard from this event? And, um, man... Tom Brady is a good sport, I'll tell you that. Hmm. And maybe he didn't have too much to lose. All people could really make fun of is maybe him kissing his kids and um, the divorce. But, I mean, man, people had plenty to say about Tom Brady. They also had plenty of things to say about the other people in the room. Gronk was attacked a lot for being called stupid. Nikki Glaser <laughs> as a slut. Um, Kevin Hart being short. Um, a short joke. Bill Adam, Bell- what's his name? What? Oh, Tony! Like, what the heck? Tony Hinchcliffe. Name? His short joke for Kevin Hart, man. I won't <laughs> say it, but when you could say it, if you know it. Oh, oh man. man! And then we have um, Bill Belichick getting roasted. And I'll say my favorite joke of the entire night. I'll be on the record with this. Was when Tom Brady goes on, he talks about, you know, I love all these different rings you got me, Bill. But my favorite ring of all is the ring camera that was on that poor girl's uh, front porch <laughs> catching you leaving the act, which Ryan, I told you, we covered that on the tweet cap. We did. That's Bill Belichick. You didn't say it was. And I Bill didn't. Belichick, he may have not confirmed or denied, but with that smirk and that joke being brought up, <laughs> Bill Belichick was yeah. getting some ass and um, wherever if, the hell he was. If Tom Brady brought it up, then that means it's pretty pretty well established that that was Bill Belichick. <laughs> yeah, finally. Oh, I do remember you guys talking about yeah. this, yeah. And yeah, if Tom Brady felt he could bring that up on TV, on Netflix like that, then he had to be pretty confident uh, that, that, that that was what was going on. Um, I'm going to say um, the person who got roasted hardest was Aaron Hernandez. Uh, <laughs> they, they kicked the oh. living snot out of Aaron Hernandez. Um rightfully so I'll, I'll i'll throw that out there but in terms of my favorite jokes um i did like nikki glazer's um crypto joke about like, she's like how did you get scammed out of all that even gronk knew <laughs> this money no real <laughs> uh, that was a good one. um the whole uh, i keep get saying his name wrong tony hingecliffe Hin- yeah Hinchcliffe. exactly hingecliffe uh, you said it right Hinchcliffe? okay That's- his entire bit was funny. He just literally walked down the line. Uh, I don't like Andrew Schultz that much. I thought it was really funny when he made fun of him. Uh, the Bert <laughs> Kreischer joke I thought was also very funny. Um, uh, with the it looks like the Tiger King and 
Oh God! And the Liver King, if their liver got oh, it only oh yeah, Burger he King said a and their liver got joke, beat up I, or looked like Martin Luther King after getting beat up by Rodney by King. Rodney King. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a whole King based joke. Um, I thought that was very funny. Uh, that whole little that whole stretch that he did when he went down the line was very funny. Uh, and yeah, and then Tom Brady again, he did really well. I like the shots he took at the Bills. Um. I thought that was kind of fun as well. You know, he kept it some football jokes for the the football crowd while also addressing his wife leaving him and all that. Uh, <laughs> the kiss your coach thing. Um, <laughs> the karate. Oh, who I forget who even told that joke. Um, that was a pretty good one too. <laughs> um, because I think that was Kevin Hart. That was Kevin Hart because his wife he was making fun of Giselle for uh macking on her karate coach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, again, everyone was very funny, um, except with one exception. Uh, Matt told me I wasn't allowed to like the Kim Kardashian made an OJ joke. I thought the no, OJ joke I just was said funny. Kim Kardashian wasn't funny. Kim K, no, I'm listen. I won't harp on this for too much, but all I'm saying, Kim K, you probably realize is you can't be this dim witted to notice. If you're not pretty much an executive that could get the money, no one likes you. <laughs> no, what people literally are upset when they see you. People aren't inspired by you. People definitely, I can respect you staying relevant by any means necessary to do that. <laughs> but Kim, oh my God. Well, I'm just going to say Kim Kardashian Esquire, by the way. Um, All right, fine. I will give you credit for that. For her, uh, for I did that. think that the, the one OJ joke at the very beginning was funny. She's like, I feel bad for you, Tom, for everyone taking shots at you, but I think my family has defended enough former football players. I thought that was very funny, <laughs> and that was the only funny part of the set, but it made you me You said laugh. it funnier. Well, thank you. Uh, it's a uh, Ryan joke. I've, I've claimed it. My family, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, Robert Kardashian, defended O.J. Simpson. Oh, um, but anyway, no, in all seriousness, I think like everyone did a, a serviceable job at the bare minimum. Most people did a great job. Um, and yeah, it was funny. Uh, yeah, that that Tony Hinchcliffe guy, he's he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, he's here to talked stay. about him too. We've talked about his show, right? He's the Kill Tony. Kill yes, Tony, yeah. Um, amazing. He sold on Madison Square Garden in two nights for a show for a podcast that's mostly mm -hmm. on YouTube. He's the real deal. A, J a Joe Rogan disciple. Oh, that's good. So he'll 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 end up in crazy town eventually. But for now, he's fine. Yeah, yeah no, nah, that guy's awesome. That guy is awesome. That that um, <laughs> the the way he ended his rant and getting that Kim Kardashian, that was that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like just and then when it pans to her face, she's like she's like laughing, but then like she's like looking around. It was like I think it cut a little deep. It was pretty funny, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it cut a little deep. But um, I guess uh, I I I thought it was a pretty good roast. I mean um. I, I I saw the part where uh where um where Bob Ross I think that's his name or Jeff, Jeff Ross Jeff, Jeff Ross, Ross. Yeah. he made he made the jokes uh with the um Robert Kraft yeah with Robert mm. Kraft thank you and Tom and told, Tom shut it down <laughs> he didn't like that one he did not like that one that's like, the only time Tom Brady shut anything down it wasn't even about him that was that was, that was crazy yeah that that yeah that was interesting that was said, interesting don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. yeah yeah, yeah. do you think by bad. the way do you think that was real do you think he was legitimately I upset i do oh okay shoot because the way that jeff ross responded it was like with that giggle he's like okay and he was like laughing when he said it and that was i think him trying to cover the fact that he had no idea Tom <laughs> was about to come up and uh yeah so i think that that was very much real that robert Kraft's legal issues are not something that tom brady wants brought up well, he we'll see. We know what side he's on with between him and Bill. But ultimately, what a great night! So funny, mm -hmm. good stuff, all in all. And um, they definitely have to do this again. And what athlete or celebrity do you think Ooh. would you pick who has the balls to get destroyed like that? Like for instance, I don't think Patrick Mahomes is somebody who's. I think he's admittedly saying he's very shy. I don't think he would. Yeah, he would take that, that smoke. But who the Kelsey? Oh. The Kelsey's. Yeah, Kelsey. That'd be funny. That would be funny. That would be if you did both of them too, did the Kelsey brothers get them both on there? Yeah. You could, I think you could do a roast of the Kelsey brothers as soon as Travis retires. I think that would be perfect. Or should be good either way. But regardless, we will see where it goes. 
excellent show from Ryan Dolo Ren. Much love to you guys. Um, and we'll see if we're going to do another part for Kendrick versus Drake, but, um, hmm. I have a feeling we're there's bound to be something to be talk about, but seriously, two of the best to ever do it on the show and, um, to more great content along the way, check us out this Tuesday with M sorry, this Wednesday with NFL this Friday with NBA playoffs. See ya. See ya. Bye Ryan. Bye. Seeing you guys catch you on the next one. <laughs>